There are numerous studies that show the benefits of exercise on helping to prevent and reduce the risk of diabetes, dementia, and even death. And the question is, how much exercise do we need to do? So measuring the amount of our physical activity by keeping track of steps has become very popular as people use smartwatches and their phones. Now in this video, I'm gonna go over exactly how many steps do you need to do to gain these benefits and at what intensity do you need to take those steps? Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York City. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. People often talk about getting in their 10,000 steps for the day, but the question is, where does that number come from? So let's start with talking about dementia. So a very recent study that was just published about a month ago, they tracked 78,000 people. And what they did is they each gave them a pedometer to wear that measures their amount of steps. And these people were average age, about 61 years old. And then they followed them over a course of seven years to see what the outcome was. And what they found were those people who were doing about 10,000 steps a day had reduced their risk of developing dementia by 50% compared to those people who were sedentary. Now, if you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of steps and you're discouraged about doing that many, don't be, because even those people who did less steps, 3,800 steps, what they found was those people reduced their risk of dementia by 25% compared to people who were sedentary. So sure, 10,000 steps a day an ideal, but even reaching 3,800 steps a day also provides significant benefit in reducing the risk of developing dementia. Several studies have been able to demonstrate that as people increase the number of steps they take a day, it can help reduce their risk of dying. So let's start with older adults, those people over the age of 70. So there's a study that was performed of about 16,000 people, average age of 72 years of age. And they compared in that group, people who walk less than 2,700 steps a day to those who were doing about 8,400 steps a day. And what they found was that in those people who were doing those higher level of steps, actually reduced their risk of death by 60% during that follow-up period of the study compared to the people who are doing just a few steps a day. So that's a tremendous benefit for those older adults. So let's slide down the age group to those in their 60s. And again, the studies show that the, for those people who are walking 10,000 steps a day or more, will tremendously reduce their risk of dying compared to those who are sedentary. And there's a meta-analysis of about 47,000 people that showed that they can reduce their risk by 50 to 60% compared to those people who are sedentary. Now let's slide down the scale again to those people in their 50s. And so again, there was another study of several thousand people, average age about 57. And what they found is that when comparing people who walk only 4,000 steps a day to those people walking 8,000 steps a day, the people in the higher group reduced their risk of death by 50% compared to those people in the lower walking group. Now, what if you do even more steps? So this study found that if those people increased to 12,000 steps, they could reduce their risk of death during the follow-up period in the study by 65%. So let's slide down all the way to those people who are in their 40s. So again, there's another study that looked at people in this age group, and they compared those who were walking more than 7,000 steps a day to those walking less. And they found that those in the higher group had reduced their risk of death during the follow-up period of the study by 50%. So why does taking steps reduce the risk of dying? And so what we need to look under the hood is that cardiovascular disease, because this is a very big reason for why many people die. So we need to look at how being physically active or walking or taking steps is going to impact our cardiovascular system. So there was a study of 70,000 women and what they found was that those people who were taking lots more steps, let's say walking about three hours a day at a brisk pace, actually could reduce their risk of a, a heart attack or dying from a heart attack by 35%. So, so this cardiovascular disease and the impact of physical activity on that sort of explains why taking steps reduces the risk of people dying. Now, the next thing that we can see is that as we increase the number of steps, 
it will further help. So studies show that every additional 2,000 steps can decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease by about 10%. Now the next thing to think about is blood pressure. So blood pressure is important. And so taking more steps, being physically active can reduce blood pressure. And why is that important? Because reducing blood pressure can reduce the risk of stroke and death from other vascular uh, disorders. And now the last thing uh, to talk about in the cardiovascular disease is that uh, doing more steps, more physical activity can actually reduce triglycerides. It can actually reduce inflammatory markers in the body that are uh, associated with many chronic diseases. And it can actually help boost uh, HDL, the good cholesterol. So all these benefits on the cardiovascular system to some degree explain how taking more steps can actually be associated with reduced risk of dying over a period of time. So we just talked about the impact of taking steps on the risk of death and on dementia. So now let's talk about the third D, which is diabetes. So here again, taking more steps every day will reduce that risk of developing diabetes. And so there was a study of older people, and what they found were those who were taking more than 4,500 steps a day could reduce their risk of developing diabetes by 40% compared to those people who were sedentary, and that's during that follow-up period. Now, again, there's incremental benefits. Every additional 2,000 steps a day that someone would take can help further reduce their risk by another 5 to 10% of developing diabetes. So how does walking and increasing number of steps we take every day reduce our risk of developing diabetes? So there are a few potential ways. One, as we're more physically active, it helps promote insulin sensitivity. It also helps promote the uptake of glucose from our blood system to our muscle. Now, we also have to think about that diabetes is associated with obesity. And so there are studies that show that as we increase the number of steps we take, that we can help reduce waist circumference size, BMI, body fat. It can also uh, show benefits to blood glucose and insulin levels. So all these parameters are important as we walk and they help those parameters that helps reduce the risk of diabetes. Now on a side note, Losing weight by walking is a slow endeavor, so we don't lose that much weight from walking. So if that is someone's goal, I would also recommend they think about adding nutrition. So throughout this video so far, we've been talking about the volume, the number of steps we take every day. But what about the intensity? Meaning how many steps we take every minute, that pace. Does increasing our pace also have an impact? And so the answer is yes. So as we increase the intensity and our pace, that helps improve the benefits we get by reducing the risk, and this has been shown for diabetes, dementia, and death. So therefore, if you're able to, try to walk at a more brisk pace. Using something like a smartwatch or your mobile phone that can track your steps is actually a really good tool and technique to increase the number of steps you take a day. So they've done studies that show that people who are using these tracking devices just by using them helps motivate them. And they actually show that using them can increase the number of steps people take by about 2,500 steps a day. But another important uh, component to this is that you need to set a goal. So whatever the goal is, 10,000 steps, 8,000 steps, having the goal and wearing one of these tracking devices combined together is what helps people increase their number of steps. So let's wrap up this video with a few key points. Number one, tracking your steps is a practical way of measuring how much physical activity you're getting in every single day. Number two, try to reach that 10,000 steps every day because it can help reduce your risk of developing dementia, diabetes, and helps reduce the risk of death. Number three, even if you can't reach 10,000 steps a day, still doing some has benefits and can help reduce those risks. Number four, setting a goal can actually help motivate people to do more steps every day. And finally, if you can increase your pace, that's gonna add additional benefits. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video or in my office.